Hi friends, it's Alexa from Alexa Loves Books and today I am bringing you my November, I was gonna say October, my November book haul. I'm really excited to share a lot of the books that I got with you in the month of November. There are a lot of really good ones in here and I'm looking forward to talking about them. I will try not to go on and on about them because there's quite a few that we have to get through but bear with me if this video gets a teensy bit long. Let's start with the stuff that I got for review from publishers, which I'm very excited about. First of all, we have an arc that came wrapped in this awesome paper, and obviously I kept the paper because I'm kind of obsessed. Um, and the book in question is The Song Rising by Samantha Shannon, and this is the third book in the Bone Season series. This one comes out in March 2017 and I actually already read it because I couldn't help myself and I talked about it in my November wrap up which I will leave a link to down below. It is incredible. I think it was the perfect addition to the series. I am very excited for where it leads into for the fourth book, although I'm now dying because I don't have the fourth book and I think a lot of people who have been waiting for this book will not be disappointed. It's just so good. I can't really get into what the plot is because it's obviously the third book. But I will tell you that if you have not yet read the Bone Season series, now is the time to start reading them because this book comes out in March and you will want your, to get your hands on it and get caught up with all the books. So definitely check it out. So thank you Bloomsbury for sending this to me. For being part of the Heartless blog tour, I actually got a copy of Heartless by Marissa Meyer from Macmillan and it is beautiful. You guys have probably seen the pictures, but let me just show you anyway. Um, I love the simplicity of the cover, but more than that, I love this pattern on the actual book hardcover. It is incredible. It is so, so pretty. And it suits the story perfectly. But anyway, Heartless is a story that centers around Kath, who will become eventually the Queen of Hearts in Wonderland. So it is consider you can consider it a prequel to the Wonderland books. And it is really, the King of Wonderland is interested in Kath and wants to marry her, but Kath doesn't want to marry him. Instead, she wants to open a bakery with her best friend, Marianne. And so as she tries to devise a way to escape this impending marriage of hers, she also encounters a few characters that you guys will recognize and a boy named Jest who I don't think is in the Alice in Wonderland books, but yeah, it becomes this fantastic, crazy adventure and it definitely kept me on the edge of my seat, especially as I was nearing the end. And it is really, really good, guys. You should definitely check it out. It's really good. It's definitely a little bit different, obviously, from the Lunar Chronicles because it is not science fiction. It's pure fantasy, but I thought it was so much fun. I really, really, really loved Marissa Meyer's take on Wonderland. I thought it was so smart. I thought it was so fun. I think that a lot of people are going to enjoy it as well. Even if you didn't love Alice in Wonderland, like I liked Alice in Wonderland. I didn't love it. This book is still like worth the read, especially if you loved Marissa Meyer's writing already from her previous series. Thank you so much Fierce Reads and Macmillan for sending this my way. Also, I will link to my blog tour post for that down below because I had a lot of fun doing it. Next book that I got in the mail was The Dark Days Pact by Alison Goodman and this is the sequel to The Dark Days Club, which confession, I haven't read it yet. I really want to though because I really liked her other duology, Eon and Iona. This one is the first book in the series is about a girl who is brought up to be a proper lady but then she discovers that there is this actual underground society of people of her class that fight paranormal creatures or demons or something like that. So yeah, I definitely have to check out the first one before I read the second one but I'm so excited to have this. So thank you so much Penguin Random House for sending this along to me. And then we have a sequel that I am highly anticipating. It's a companion novel to a book that came out earlier this year and that is the Cursed Queen by Sarah Fine, and this is the follow-up to The Imposter Queen, which I thought was really impressive. Anza has always been a fighter. As a child, she fought the invaders who murdered her parents and snatched her as a raid prize. She fought for her place next to Thyra, the daughter of the Krigeri chief chieftain. She fought for her status as a warrior in her tribe. Blood and victory are her way of life. But one day, the Krigeri crossed the Great Lake and threatened the Witch Queen of the Kupari. Everything changes. Cursed by the queen with fire and ice, Ansa is forced to fight against an invisible enemy, the dark magic that has embedded itself deep in her bones. The more she seeks to hide it, the more dangerous it becomes. And with the Krigeri numbers decimated and the tribe under threat from the traitorous brother of their dead chieftain, Ansa is torn between her loyalty to the Krigeri, her love for Thyra, and her own survival instincts. With her world in chaos and each side wanting to claim her for their own, only one thing is certain. Unless Ansa can control the terrible magic inside her, everything she has fought for will be destroyed. And that sounds so epic and I'm so excited. So thank you so much, Simon and Schuster, for sending this to me. And I got another book from Bloomsbury and that book is Everything Love Is by 
Claire King. It's described as a poignant, mysterious, and unforgettable story of love and of the happy endings we conceive for ourselves. And it is about a guy named Baptiste, Baptiste Molino. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And he basically is sort of a counselor type and helps his clients find contentment. And so he, unlike his clients, is more concerned with his past than his present, but there is a waitress who works at a nearby local bar that is concerned about him and decides that she's gonna help him embrace his passions and his future. It just sounds like it's gonna be a really good story and I love the cover too. Thank you so much Shay and Bloomsbury for sending this along to me and I hope I love it. Oh my gosh, and then I got this arc in the mail and I was dying with excitement. I really, really love this author and her books and I cannot wait to read this one. And it is The Careful Undressing of Love by Corey and Heydu. And let's talk about this cover because it's very striking. I'm just gonna read it because the description on the back is amazing. So, the girls of Devonair Street have always been told that they're cursed. Any boy they love is certain to die too soon. But this is Brooklyn in 2008, and the curse is less a terror and more a lifestyle accessory, something that makes the girls from the shortest street in Brooklyn special. They wear their hair long and keys around their necks. People give them a second look and whisper Devonair to their friends. But it's not real. It won't affect their futures. Then Jack, the one boy everyone loved, dies suddenly and violently, and now the curse seems not only real, but like the only thing that matters. All their bright futures have suddenly gone dark. It sounds so good. I'm so freaking excited because I loved all of Cory and Hedo's other books and I cannot wait to get to this. So thank you so much Penguin Random House for sending it to me. And last, I have an ARC and a finished copy of a book to show you and that book is Spindle by E.K. Johnson and this is the follow up to A Thousand Nights, which I actually really liked and I really love this cover. So this is the ARC. And this is the finished copy, and it's beautiful, as you can see. And the inside is even prettier. Do you see that? Do you see how gorgeous that is? And look at the end papers with the map. There are corners in the world that are too dark to see, and there are edges that are sharper than they appear, ready to snag the unwary. There are those who do not fear the things they should, and there are those who would bargain with the devil herself for the sake of their greed. The world is made safe by a woman, yes, but it is a very big world. So it alludes to the other story where the storyteller queen was able to save her country and drive a demon out of her husband and she's kind of imprisoned the demon with the help of her family. But the prison is starting to crumble and the demon there's a demon in particular that's starting to gain power and when a princess is born, the princess is going to be forced to choose between her very soul or to destroy her own people to save her own life. Cannot wait to read this one. And I have a blog tour post coming up for it very, very soon. Thank you, Disney Hyperion. Now we can move on to the books that I bought myself, which is also quite a few books. Let's start with a book that I did talk about and in my November up because I already read it, and that book is Anna Kendrick's Scrappy Little Nobody. And this is actually a book that I picked up. It's a books on the subway book, in case you didn't see that, and I will link to their um, Instagram account so you kind of get an idea of what it's like and Rachel did a drop for these books Rachel from Hello Jelly So I kind of went and snagged one of them because I wanted to read it so bad And this is an autobiographical look at Anna Kendrick's life and I really think her voice comes across so well in it It's a memoir you will want. it's a memoir you'll want to read if you love Anna Kendrick as much as I do so definitely check out Scrappy Little Nobody if you haven't already. And next we have two books in the series and it is A Thousand Pieces of You and A Million Worlds Without You, which I still have not read. Oh no, A Million Worlds With You, which I still have not read, but look at these covers, they're so pretty. Anyway, this series is an alternate reality series and in the first book, Marguerite is determined to chase after her father's killer through the different dimensions that he is trying to skip through. And the series continues in that vein and I cannot wait to figure out what happens at the end or like find out what happens at the end. But yeah, that's the basic um, summary of it. Oh, and these books are by Claudia Gray, so I'm looking forward to finishing the series. I kind of went on Book Outlet and bought a few books. I actually bought four. Ta-da! And first is Shadow Scale. Ooh, I hit myself in the face. Shadow Scale by Rachel Hartman and this is the sequel to Serafina. Serafina is a book about a half-human, half-dragon girl who helps the captain of the guard slash prince to figure out who is causing mysterious deaths in the kingdom. And this is the follow-up to that. I can't really tell you what this one's about even though I've read it because spoilers, but it is really very good and I'm glad we finally own a copy so that Mackie can read it. Then we have a book I've heard a lot about and that is The Fixer by Jennifer Lynn Barnes and this just sounds really interesting. So it's about a girl who lives with her sister. Her sister is kind of like a political fixer so she kind of smooths things over and fixes situations and so she starts to do the same at her school 
and I think there's like a mystery involved in this, but it sounds really good and Rachel said that I would enjoy it, so I bought it. And then my friend Hannah from So Obsessed With alerted me to the fact that these books were available on Book Outlet and I really, really like both of these middle grade books. I just haven't bought them yet from my library and that is Finding Serendipity and the A Week Without Tuesday, which is the sequel. And these are both part of the Tuesday McGillicuddy series and the first book is about a girl named Tuesday and she is determined to find her mom who's gone missing and in order to do so she has to follow her mom into this magical land where writers live out their stories so they can see the story before they actually start writing them and this is the continuation of that where Tuesday is now the one who goes missing instead of her mother and these are so fun they're so whimsical they're so smart I love the way that these writers talk about storytelling through the eyes of a younger protagonist and I just think it's very imaginative imaginative and creative and I'm so glad I finally have both a book I bought because Kristen over at Super Space Chick told me I should and that book is The Architect of Song by A.G. Howard and this I've heard is a Beauty and the Beast retelling but it has sort of a ghostly spin to it I'm not sure anyway it says a lady imprisoned by deafness an architect imprisoned by his past and a ghost imprisoned within the petals of a flower intertwined in a love story that transcends life and death which sounds incredible and Kristen really loved this one so I immediately decided I needed it too. Next we have a book that I really enjoyed and that book is Iron Cast by Destiny Soria. This is a book set in 1920, I think it's 1919 or 1920, okay. This is a book set in 1919 Boston and Ada and Corrine are best friends. They both work at a club called the Cast Iron. They are people who have afflicted blood and can create illusions in art through different different like forms like singing or writing or poetry or so on and so forth and they find themselves in trouble when their gang leader goes missing their club is raided and someone is trying to get rid of both of them and it is this fun whirlwind of a story and I just really enjoyed it it like swept me up completely I love the setting I really like both of the main characters not so keen on the romances but the main characters I loved I love the story as well even though I guessed at some of it I still thought it was really fun to read I think a lot of people are missing this one so definitely check this one out if you haven't already it's such a great book you guys and it's so enjoyable and then of course I picked up a copy of the Fantastic Beast and Where to Find Them screenplay by JK Rowling and I watched the Fantastic Beast movie early and I absolutely loved it. I will link to the movie review I did with Mackie down below. This, I, this screenplay, I haven't read it yet, but I am so excited to because one, I love New Scamander. Two, it's from JK Rowling and not someone else. Three, I just need to relive that movie again because it was incredible. And yeah, that's all I've got to say about that. I picked up the Flights of Fantasy Book Club book la last month and that is Geist by Philippa Ballantyne. And this is the first book in the A Book of the Order series. And all I know about it is that it has shape-shifting involved in it and it's a fantasy and I think that's all I really need to know about it. So I have a bunch of books that I acquired from my collections. I'm pretty excited about them. So first is this Puffin Classics edition of Grimm's Fairy Tales and if you guys don't know already I actually collect different editions of fairy tale books particularly Grimm's fairy tales because this is what I grew up on and I love this edition. I think the cover is fantastic with all the love the colors and the illustration and yeah it's it's so cute and I'm so glad to add it to my collection. In line with that I actually have another edition of Grimm's Fairy Tales haha -ha, because obviously I needed another one and whenever I find ones that I've never seen before I'm always keen to own them and have them for my collection if they're a reasonably priced edition and this one is the Grimm's Fairy Tales collection which I found at the Strand and it's got illustrations by Arthur Rackham. I'm not sure which version this is but I know it's out of print and it's lovely. I think the illustrations are great and it's just a nice addition to my collection. Speaking of fairy tales, I finally got this book. It is Celtic Tales, Fairy Tales and Stories of Enchantment from Ireland, Scotland, Brittany and Wales with illustrations by Kate Forrester and I just love that cover guys. It's amazing. Do you see that? It's incredible. And I'm very much looking forward to reading this one. I'm very excited because I don't actually own a book with Celtic Tales. A couple of editions of a book I thought that I would never see new editions for, like for a while anyway, but then I went to the Strand and I kind of found them and I just needed to buy them. So first are these editions of A Little Princess and The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. And I love the bright pink and the bright purple on this. I think that's really cool. And I like that 
on the borders, I don't know if you guys can see it, but on the borders, like on this one, there's diamonds, a monkey, a house, a doll, and that's significant to the story. And on this one, it's like butterfly, key, flowers, and stuff like that. So that's really cool, and I'm very excited to add these to my shelf. Another edition of The Secret Garden, which has this pretty lonely but lovely portrait of Mary basically in the garden, which I think was really cool, so I acquired it. And there you have it, guys. Those are all the books that I bought or acquired in the month of November. I'm sure there were a couple of ebooks in there somewhere, but yeah, I'll just list that. If you guys are interested in any of these books or want to see reviews for them or have read them and want to tell me what you think, definitely do all that in the comment section. I would love to see it. And if you want to talk to me on other social media, definitely check out all my links below. And I will see you guys with another video soon. Bye!